Hey, this is Dexter. This video is on the topic of differentiation and integration of trigonometric functions. We will also be learning how to do integration using the reverse of differentiation. In the first part of the question, differentiate x cosine 2x with respect to x. In the next part, find the derivative of x squared sine 2x with respect to x. And in the last part of the question, integrate x squared cosine 2x with respect to x. This question is from Chongqing High Main Preliminary Examination 2021 for GC O Level Additional Math. Pause to give it a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. In the first part of the question, to differentiate x cosine 2x, we will have to bring the product rule of differentiation where we differentiate uv with respect to x. We will begin by first copying u, and in this case, copying x. Next, we will differentiate v, that is to differentiate cosine 2x. For us to differentiate cosine 2x, we will need another formula. This time, it will be the differentiation of trigonometric functions, where differentiating cosine f of x will first give us negative sine f of x. In this case, differentiating cosine 2x will first give negative sine 2x. Then, we will multiply by the differentiation of the angle f of x. And differentiating the angle 2x will give us 2. The next step of our product rule of differentiation will be to copy down v. And we will copy down cosine 2x. Followed by the derivative of u. And therefore, differentiating x will give us 1. Simplifying this will give the result of negative 2x multiplied by sine 2x plus cosine 2x. For the second part of this question, to differentiate x squared sine 2x, we will use the product rule of differentiation again where we start by copying u, which in our case will be to copy down x squared, followed by the dv over dx. This means we will have to differentiate sine 2x. And we are now bringing another differentiation of trigonometric functions where we differentiate sine f of x will first give us cosine f of x. And differentiating sine 2x will first give us cosine 2x. Multiplied by the differentiation of the angle f of x. That means differentiating an angle of 2x will give us 2. We will then proceed to the second half of product rule where we copy down v. And so we will copy down sine 2x. Then, we will find the derivative of u. And for our case, the derivative of x squared will be 2x. Simplifying this will give us the answer of 2x squared multiplied by cosine 2x plus 2x multiplied by sine 2x. For the last part of the question, using the concept of integration as a reverse of differentiation, we will now integrate the result in part 1. You will give us the left-hand side, which is x cosine 2x plus c1, where c1 is a constant from the integration. Similarly, integrating the result in part 2 will also give us the left-hand side, x squared sine 2x plus c2, where c2 is the constant from this integration. In order to find the integral of x squared cosine 2x in part 3, we will have to eliminate the unwanted terms, which is the integral of 2x sine 2x in both equations. By simply adding both equations, and we are now one step closer to finding part 3 by getting this result with a C3 where C3 is the constant from C1 and C2 previously. Next, we will shift the integral of cosine 2x to the right side of this equation, and bear in mind that we need to make the integral of x squared cosine 2x the subject, we will now divide by 2 throughout the entire equation. To integrate x squared cosine 2x with respect to x, we will have one last hurdle, that is to integrate cosine 2x. By the integration of trigonometric functions, integrating cosine ax plus b with respect to x, we will first have sine ax plus b. And in our workings, integrating cosine 2x will first give a result of sine 2x. Next, we will then multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of x. And our reciprocal of coefficient of x will be a half. 
we will complete this step by adding a C where C now refers to the arbitrary constant. And here it is, the antiderivative of x squared cosine 2x. Let's try another similar question. In part 1, show that the derivative of tangent cube of x is 3 times secant of x with a degree of 4 minus away 3 times secant square of x. Next, evaluate the integral of secant of x with a degree of 4 minus away 2 times secant square of x from 0 to pi over 4. This question is from Anderson Preliminary Examination 2021 for GC O Level Additional Math. Pause to give it a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. To differentiate tangent q of x, we will have to apply the chain rule where we bring down the power outside the bracket and power minus 1, giving us 3 times tangent square of x followed by a differentiation of tangent of x. By the differentiation of trigonometric functions, where the derivative of tangent of x is equal to secant square of x. Next, to convert tangent square to a secant square, we will need the Pythagorean trigonometric identities, also known as basic trigonometric identities, where secant square theta is equal to 1 plus tangent square theta. And we will now replace tangent square x to be secant square x minus 1. Simplifying this will give us the required proving for this part of the question. Just like the example in the earlier question, using the concept of integration as a reverse of differentiation, we will now integrate the result in part 1, giving us the left-hand side, which is tangent q of x. Using the scalar multiple rule of integration, we will now divide the entire equation by 3. Notice that the integral in the question involves a negative 2 times of second square of x. We are now minus an additional integral of second square of x to both sides of the equation. To integrate second of x with a degree of 4 minus away 2 times second square of x from 0 to pi over 4, we will need to integrate second square of x. By the integration of trigonometric functions, integrating second square of x will give us tangent of x from 0 to pi over 4. Evaluating tangent q of x from 0 to pi over 4 will give a result of 1. Similarly, evaluating tangent x from 0 to pi over 4 will give the same result of 1. And that's the answer to this question, negative 2 thirds. Did you manage to get it right? I hope you've learned something again today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.